Every year, more than 500,000 women die from causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. 50% of those deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa, where maternal mortality is the leading cause of death for young women. In Ethiopia alone, some 20,000 women die each year while giving birth, and thousands face lifelong disabilities. Five weeks ago, 27-year-old Samuni Kito gave birth to a stillborn, her eighth child. She was lucky to survive. My husband thought that the heavy work I was doing was the reason for the stillbirth. Samoni and her husband are subsistence farmers. They depend on their own crops to feed their family. Barely surviving off the land, they just can't afford the additional medical costs for a hospital delivery. So they rely on the traditional practice of home births. But even those who could afford it resist hospitals because of safety issues. Two years ago, there were massive deaths because of a shortage of a critical drug that prevents hemorrhaging. There was no oxytocin in a country, and we have lost lots of mothers because of the lack of these drugs. Some 25% of maternal deaths in Ethiopia are caused by hemorrhage, and oxytocin is effective in preventing severe postpartum hemorrhaging. Without it, this woman would have bled to death when her baby was trapped in her birth canal. Samoni took matters into her own hands. Not willing to risk her life by giving birth again, she has decided to take contraceptives. UNFPA and its partners gave $25 million to the government to meet its contraceptive needs in support of maternal health. And the coverage is for two years now. We have bought for 25 million contraceptive uh, since 2004, since the program has started. Ethiopia is determined to raise its contraceptive prevalence rate to 60 percent. But more needs to be done to ensure a robust health force and adequate supplies are available to handle the 2.6 million births that occur each year. So that when a woman gives birth, it's a moment to celebrate, not to mourn.